This is Caesar, an Anatolian sheepdog. His ancestors were bred in Turkey to guard sheep and fight wolves. But this intrepid dog is in Namibia, an arid land far from his native home. Here, Caesar faces not wolves, but cheetahs. And he's not supposed to fight them, but to help them. It's estimated there are fewer than 3,000 cheetahs left in the country. And these survivors are under threat from farmers who may kill them for stocking their livestock. I came here first in 1977. At that point in time, I found out that there was a great deal of conflict between the farmers and the cheetahs. And doing cheetah research at that period of time, I realized that if we did have a hope for the cheetah to survive in the wild, Namibia was the best chance. It has land, it has wild game, and I believe that there's opportunities that farmers and cheetahs can live together for the future. Naturalist Lori Marker is co-founder of the Cheetah Conservation Fund. The organization provides farmers with dogs that protect flocks without hurting cheetahs. Anatolians are perfect for the assignment. After two years of research, the uh, livestock guarding dog that was best suited for the farmer's needs as well as the area that they have to work in was the Anatolian. The dog is a very independent thinking dog, which is, was another characteristic that why it was chosen. It has 6,000 years of instincts. It will do exactly what has to be done. Like other dogs in the program, Caesar was placed with the herd as a puppy and was raised with the livestock without much human contact. He stays with his herd 24 seven. At first, it was difficult to convince rural farmers that owning and feeding a dog could be beneficial. But more than 250 dogs have gone to work since the program began, and cheetah mortality is dropping. Now many farmers have stopped using poison baits because of the dogs. The dogs and training are free, as is vet care. The people actually do see the benefit of the dog, and uh, they are now taking care of the dog very well. And because they see the benefit that if they take care of the dog properly, the dog is going to do their job properly. The dog project's been very, very successful. Over 90% of the farmers are extremely pleased. We've reduced livestock loss so that the farmers that do have the dogs do not have livestock loss, not only to the cheetah, but to other predators. Mori also runs a refuge for injured or orphan cheetahs. The goal is to return them to the wild, but some are not able to survive on their own. Instead, they become part of an education program to promote cheetah conservation. Through our education programs, through our farm management programs, all of these are ways that we can help the cheetah, where people, if they learn more about the, the cheetah and its needs, and ways that people and the cheetah can live together, that there's a chance that this species can survive on Earth. Turkish dogs, and African cheetahs, two animals worlds apart, brought together for the sake of peaceful coexistence. Many people are fully aware of animals who support humans. They help keep humans calm when they have anxiety or keep them company when they're emotional and or depressed. There have been several different support animals, including pigs, turkeys and ducks. The most popular support animals are our friendly canine companions. But did you know that humans weren't the only ones who needed the support? We're not the only ones who need animals to assist us in stressful situations. Animals need emotional support from other animals as well. Cheetahs, for example, actually need a lot more help than you can imagine. Captured cheetahs actually tend to suffer from many anxiety-related conditions. Oddly, the best way to help the cheetahs cope with the anxiety is by pairing them up with their own support dog. Andy Stardust recently posted photos of a baby cheetah and his support Labrador pup onto Twitter. The two animals are from the San Diego Zoo and look like they've already grown to be the best of friends. His recent photos, however, show nothing new. Dogs have been assisting cheetahs keep calm for many years now. 
the San Diego Zoo has actually been assigning cheetahs with support dogs since the 1980s. According to Thought Co., cheetahs in captivity who live in compounds and zoos tend to be quite shy instinctively. Because of this, they can't mate. Apparently, shyness and anxiety don't bode well for a breeding program. To help, cheetahs are usually paired off with energetic and affectionate dogs. This way, the dogs act as their role models. The cheetahs learn from their behavior and look to them for cue. It's about getting them to read that calm, happy-go-lucky vibe from the dog. In simpler terms, dogs teach cheetahs how to open up and become more friendly by creating the ultimate friendship with them. Although dog and cheetah companionship is nothing new, Stardust's Twitter post went viral. His Twitter post started a thread that eventually became filled with pictures and gifts of other cheetah and dog friendships. Zoos often get criticized for imprisoning animals for what seems to be human enjoyment. However, many people are unaware that a lot of zoo animals are there because they were rescued and wouldn't have been able to survive in the wild on their own. Although a dog and a cheetah isn't what you'd normally see in nature, zoos have proven that the relationship can be very beneficial. The odd friendship actually does more good than harm in this scenario. In fact, if it weren't for these support dogs, many of these cheetahs would never develop the socializing skills they need to mate. Meaning that the furry companions are actually helping the cheetahs from becoming extinct. According to one animal training specialist, every cheetah is born shy. A dominant dog is very helpful because cheetahs are quite shy instinctively, and you can't breed that out of them, explains Janet Rose Hinostroza, animal training supervisor at the park. The support dogs enlisted at the zoos are usually rescued from shelters. The homeless pups are given a second chance in life to serve a new purpose that'll be equally beneficial. Cheetah cubs are paired off with their support dogs when they're only three or four months old. When the two meet for the first time, they appear on opposite sides of a fence. The dog is usually walking on a leash with a keeper. If things go well, the next step will be for the two animals to meet face to face. They'll be set up for their very first play date. However, both animals will be kept on their own leash for safety reasons. We're very protective of our cheetahs, so the introduction is a painfully slow process but a lot of fun, said Rose Hinos Rosa. There are lots of toys and distractions, and they're like two cute little kids who desperately want to play. But cheetahs are instinctively hardwired to feel uneasy so you have to wait and let the kid make the first move.